Is this a drill or something? The Reddit theory about Jar Jar Binks being a trained Force user, knowing Sith collaborator, and will play a central role in The Force Awakens. Here, I'll seek to establish that Jar Jar Binks, far from being simply the bumbling idiot he portrays himself as, is in fact a highly skilled Force user in terms of martial ability and mind control. Furthermore, I assert that he was not, as many people assume, just an unwitting political tool manipulated by Palpatine. Rather, he and Palpatine were likely in collaboration from the very beginning, and it's entirely possible that Palpatine was a subordinate underling to Binks throughout both trilogies. And finally, given the above, I will conclude with an argument as to why I believe it's not only possible, but plausible, that Jar Jar will make a profound impact on the upcoming movies and what his role may be. So first, let's establish Jar Jar as a skilled warrior. While this does not in itself necessitate a connection with the physical force, it's highly suggestive in the Star Wars universe, very rarely do we see normal characters exhibiting extraordinary stunt work or physical feats unless they're Jedi, Sith, or at least force sensitives. So here's Jar Jar nonchalantly executing a standing 20 foot twisting somersault. Now, taken out of context, if you were watching a Star Wars movie and saw a character casually execute this maneuver, you'd probably assume it was a Jedi. In the context of Jar Jar though, we don't, because elsewhere he so thoroughly convinces us that he's nothing more than a harmless dunce with an inane dialogue and cowardly lion act. He also manages to convince us that he's a bumbling oaf in the midst of a pitched battle, even though he's always incredibly amazingly successful. Whether single-handedly taking down a battle droid tank, or unleashing a barrage of boombers on their front lines, or precisely targeting multiple enemies with a blaster tangled around his ankle. We simply roll our eyes and attribute it to dumb luck. But is it? Because you know, Obi-Wan, he warned us otherwise. This is one of the main reasons we, as an audience, hate Jar Jar so thoroughly. He breaks the fourth wall. He shatters our suspense of disbelief because we know that no one is really that lucky. We dismiss it as the cliché trope of the silly pathetic oaf who seems to inadvertently save the day. Now, I see this instead as a deliberate facade on the part of Jar Jar as a character, and on the part of the writers and animators, as we know the Jedi themselves are inspired by Shaolin monks, and there's a particular kung fu discipline that Jar Jar's physicality is purposefully modeled upon, which allows him to appear goofy and uncoordinated even as he seemingly lays waste to his enemies, namely the Zhu Quan, or Drunken Fist Wushu. This discipline seeks to imitate the sloshing, seemingly random foibles of a drunkard, but in reality, the staggering and stumbling is the use of bodily momentum, deception, and unpredictability intended to lure and confuse opponents. Now let's take a look at Jar Jar displaying some wushu. The comparison clips are taken from instructional Zhu Quan video. There's Jar Jar kipping up. Zhu Quan comparison. Jar Jar sloshing with a Zhu Quan comparison. Jar Jar sweeps the leg with a Zhu Quan comparison. If you slow down the above gif, you'll notice how Jar Jar dodges an incoming blaster shot at the very beginning. You'll also notice how he's mysteriously aware of the droid dicker as it appears behind him, even though it wasn't in his line of sight and he couldn't possibly hear it over the battle. Jar Jar centering himself in preparation for a force jump and a Zhu Quan comparison. Okay, so that's all well and good, but even if Jar Jar is a secret drunken fist boxing master, that doesn't make him a force user, right? Well, it should at least make us suspicious of his character, period. It establishes that his over-the-top childish antics are a veneer masking a more complex character than we were led to believe. But even if you choose to ignore Jar Jar's seemingly magical presence in battle, I believe that there is a particular scene in which we do see him clearly make use of the physical force. In The Phantom Menace, when Jar Jar and the Jedi ambush the droids and rescue the Queen and her entourage, Jar Jar accidentally botches his leap from the balcony. A few frames later, he's seen dropping from the opposite side of the balcony, which would seem to be quite impossible without a force-assisted jump and or force sprint of some kind. Let's take a look at the full scene. Jar Jar is just as effortlessly stealthy as his Jedi counterparts, interestingly. Now, as I said, we see Jar Jar catch hold of the balcony on the far right side, but then he drops to the ground on the far left. Easy to dismiss as the continuity or framing error, I suppose, except that one of the droids continues to fire on Jar Jar's initial position, even as we see him drop elsewhere. And here it is in slow motion. 
So the droid that comes charging up behind the Q-Quan drops down. What's he shooting up there? And we see his head swing back towards Jar Jar's new position after the shot. You can also see the another droid behind it tracking Jar Jar with its head and manages the shot on the new position. This means that the animators knew very well where Jar Jar was supposed to be, dangling from the balcony over Qui-Gon's left shoulder, and purposefully animate the droids tracking his inexplicably fast movement elsewhere. I think that has happened here, even though we don't see it directly, is that Jar Jar has purposefully split the attention of the enemies by grabbing onto the balcony as he falls and then, using the force, propels himself with a flip up to land in an unexpected place. In fact, this is a maneuver we've seen before, from a Jedi. Twice, if you count Obi-Wan doing it in the Duel of Fates to take more by surprise. In addition to this kind of highly suspicious physical luck, I also believe we're given enough clues justifiably to suspect that Jar Jar is also a master of Jedi mind control. Consider, we hate the way that Jar Jar influences major plot points for the same reason we hate his physicality. It messes with our sense of realism. Two experienced Jedi on a serious mission would never actually bring someone that stupid along with them. No character that idiotic would ever really be made a general. They certainly wouldn't be made a senator. How could anyone like Jar Jar really convince the entire galaxy to abandon democracy? That's ridiculous. These things are just the political version of the physical luck. Inadvertent, seemingly comically bundling, but that just so happens to result in astoundingly positive results. But what if it isn't inadvertent? What if Jar Jar's meteoric rise and inexplicable influence isn't just the result of dumb happenstance, but the result of extensive and careful use of force mind powers? Jedi, and presumably Sith, exhibit telltale signs when using the mind trick to implant suggestions or influence behavior. For one, they always gesticulate and not so subtly wave their hands at the target. Here's a look at some pivotal Jar Jar moments during his political career. Jar Jar hand waving his way towards a promotion to Bombard General. Jar Jar hand waving his way towards a promotion to the Senate. And Jar Jar using force persuasion as he hand waves the entire Galactic Senate and ushers in the death of democracy. Now actually, if you watch the prequels with the idea that Jar Jar might be a manipulative dark character, you begin to notice how insidious and subtle his manipulation is, and how effective in almost every sequence he's involved in, and also just how hyper aware of the overarching plot he really is. Examples, Jar Jar tricking the Jedi into traveling through the planet core so that they need him. Jar Jar carefully causing a scene that they run into Anakin. Jar Jar constantly mocking Qui-Gon Jinn behind his back while Anakin is watching, so Anakin learns disrespect for Jedi authority early on. Jar Jar telling an eight-year-old child that the queen is pretty hot, fanning the flames of the child's infatuation that is exploited later on. And I could go on. Now, if you lend even the slightest credence to my above points and acknowledge the possibility that Jar Jar might not be an idiot, you're almost forced to conclude that Jar Jar Binks and Palpatine were co-conspirators. If Jar Jar is putting forth an elaborate act to deceive people, it means he's not a fool. And if he's not a fool, it means his actions in Episode 2 that facilitate Palpatine's plans are not those of an unwitting tool. They're those of a partner. Remember, Palpatine and Jar Jar are from the same planet, which in the scale of the Star Wars universe is like growing up as next door neighbors. It's entirely possible that they knew each other for years prior to The Phantom Menace. Perhaps they trained together, or one trained the other. And Naboo is a really strange planet, actually. Remember those odd ancient statues with the third eye? Naboo's the kind of place an outcast Gungan might find a Sith holocron or two. But that's just speculation. Let's stick to what we know. What we know is, even after Palpatine is elected as Chancellor, years after Jar Jar has been tricked into helping elect him, Palpatine still hangs out with Jar Jar in Return of the Sith. Why? Wouldn't he be a constant source of public embarrassment? This is the same character who can't walk five yards without stepping in poodoo or squealing like a rabid donkey, right? What use does he have now? And why is he still at the right hand of the most powerful person in the galaxy? Could it be the fact that Jar Jar is the most powerful person in the galaxy? Fine, maybe it's a hilarious conspiracy theory, but why would George Lucas bother to create this devious Gungan character with an elaborate conspiratorial past, but then never actually reveal his true nature? Here's George Lucas from a documentary talking about Yoda. 
And he says, Yoda really comes from a tradition in mythological storytelling, fairy tales of the hero finding a little creature on the side of the road that seems very insignificant and not very important, but who turns out to be the master or wizard or the master thing. And as we all know, one of Lucas's big deals with the prequels was that they were intended to rhyme and mirror the original trilogy in terms of the general narrative themes. So there should have been a seemingly innocent creature found on the side of the road that reveals itself as a major player. And we do have a creature that seems to describe this precisely, Jar Jar. But of course, he never develops into a master or anything openly. So here's what I think happened. I think Jar Jar was initially intended to be the prequel and dark side equivalent of Yoda. Just as Yoda has his big reveal, when we learn that his tottering and geriatric goofball persona is just a mask, Jar Jar was intended to have a big reveal in episode 2 or 3, where we learn that he's not really a naive dope, but rather a master puppeteer, Sith, in league with, or perhaps in charge of, Palpatine. However, George Lucas chickened out. The fan reaction to Jar Jar was so vitriolic that this aspect of the trilogy was totally abandoned. It was just too risky. If Jar Jar is truly that off-putting, it's potentially ruinous to the Star Wars legacy to imply that he's ultimately the bad guy of the entire saga. So pretend he was just a failed attempt at comic relief instead. This is why Dooku seems like such a flat, shoehorned in character with no backstory. He was hastily written in to cover the plot holes left when the villain Jar Jar was redacted. Yoda was meant to duel with his literal dark side nemesis and mythological equivalent at the end of Attack of the Clones, not boring old Dooku, but the Sith Master Jar Jar. And Binks was meant to escape, not just that duel, but to survive the entire trilogy, so that he could cast a shadow on the original trilogy too. You'd rewatch the originals, knowing that the Emperor wasn't necessarily the big baddie after all. Jar Jar would have still been out there somewhere, and it would have been sort of brilliant. But I believe it is likely that the writers of the new trilogy will resurrect this idea. Some people seem to think that Disney wishes to distance or somehow disassociate itself from the prequels. But this doesn't actually make any economic or marketing sense. There is far more prequel era based intellectual property to capitalize on than there is OT, if only because of the Clone Wars movie and series. Billions of dollars in iconic toys, images, characters, games, park rides, etc. that an entire young generation grew up on. Disney isn't going to pretend that over half of the $4 billion in IP that they bought simply isn't worth acknowledging. And anyway, we have a behind the scenes The Force Awakens footage that clearly shows imagery being used from the prequels. Also, many of the flags above Mars's castle in the trailer are from The Phantom Menace. No, it stands to reason that one of their primary goals will be to reinvigorate and ultimately try to redeem the prequels in the eyes of the fanbase, to elevate and improve them retroactively as much as possible. So how do you do that? Jar Jar has undoubtedly become the face of everything that is wrong with the prequels. He's too silly, too unbelievable, seemingly pointless, and if you're able to somehow change the nature of Jar Jar from embarrassing idiot to jaw-dropping villain, suddenly the entire prequel trilogy must be seen in a new light because it becomes the setup for the most astounding reveal in film history. Jar Jar Binks is Supreme Leader Snoke. Thanks for watching. This was actually submitted by Lumpawaru on Reddit, and it was amazing theory, so I thought I'd put it out there for you guys to see. But again, if any of this is true, even though it's a crazy theory, it is going to be insane. But the beauty of this video is it's just the start of the discussion. Our love of Star Wars, it surrounds and it binds us. So let me know, do you think the Jar Jar Binks could possibly be Supreme Leader Snoke or evil in any way? Because if you love Star Wars, I want to talk to you about it. It's as simple as that. If you want to stay up to date with the latest Star Wars videos on origins, games, and theories, don't forget to use those force powers of yours and hit subscribe. And hey, leave a comment below about what you want to see in future videos. It may just get covered. Thanks for watching, and may the force be with you. Always.